Hey everyone, today we're going to be painting an Airstream trailer. You will need a 140 pound watercolor paper, set of watercolors, a black ink pen, and a watercolor paint brush, like so. Let's begin. First, we are going to outline our Airstream. Now you can use a reference image off of Google, which is what I did, or you can draw one from memory if you're a freaking genius, but I don't remember exactly what they look like. So I opted for the reference photo. Now keep in mind, I'm not copying someone's work exactly. I'm just using it as a reference and making it entirely my own. One of the main ideas behind pen and wash is you are laying down a base layer of pen and then washing over it with a nice watercolor that doesn't isn't too intense and it adds this really cool, almost old Think Winnie the Pooh children's books style to uh, these drawings. And it's just, it's such a cool, cool style. And it's one of my favorites. And it's probably what I'll center most of the pieces around on this channel. Um, so you're, you're basically creating a almost cartoonish outline of your setting. <clears throat> Jeez, every video I have to clear my throat. And my lines are very loose, um, but you have to be specific within your lines. And I've mentioned that in other videos as well. So really, really know what you want to draw before you start drawing it. So we're just building up details at this point, getting our setting laid out and making sure that we are happy with our pen. You can go as little or as far as you want on this stage. I would recommend getting your seen basically completely laid out before you add any wash because it will be harder to come back through with pen and add in more details later. So make sure you get a very good base before you start painting anything. And now it is time to paint. If you have watched any of my other tutorials, which I will link in the description, I always do the sky first. I think it's just the thing I like to do. And for this one, I added in a nice base wash of yellow around my, sh my Airstream and my picnic table. Um, and then I come back through with more blue and purple and add that into the upper portion of the sky. Keep in mind, this is a very light wash. I'm not doing anything too crazy at all. I also opted to bring in some of those yellows into the grass and the Airstream as well. And that can be a really nice underpainting to begin with. I'm also starting to flesh out the trail and the grass and starting to build those tones as well. Like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna bring some purple into the sky and a little bit of blue to accentuate those clouds and give them some nice contrast, make it look like a, a sunset setting. My approach for skies is as they approach the top of the page, they get darker. And as they go closer to the focal point, they get lighter and that can give really nice sky effects. Now it's time for my favorite part. Take a rolled up napkin and blot it over the sky to pull out some really nice looking clouds. It's super simple. I say it in every video and it always works. I've never had it fail. Now I'm just painting around those areas as well and starting to bring some blue into the Airstream. This gives it a sort of metallic look and we're gonna build this up with a little bit of black wash as well. Keep in mind the black is not very intense and neither is the blue. None of these tones are very stark right now. We're gonna build them up over time. For any painting or drawing, it's important to remember where your light source is coming from. So for this painting, I imagined the sun was behind and off to the right of this Airstream and picnic table setting. So I'm shadowing according to that. So I'm bringing in some darker greens and some grays into that grass to give it some shadows where the light source is coming from. So you always have to be thinking ahead before you start painting. Don't just blindly start painting stuff. Make sure you're you're actively thinking, okay, in this scenario, where would this sun be and where would the shadows be cast on my, my painting or drawing or whatever you're doing? Yeah, just stay focused and try to actively think through your drawing. 
friggin' blow dry that first layer and then you won't have any smudging happen or any bleeding from your colors into other colors, which is great. Now for this, I wanted to add in some little rust spots. So I took some brown and added some little fun shapes around the, the metallic part of the Airstream. So I thought I added a cool effect. You can do whatever the freak you want. I don't know. I'm starting to bring in more blues and starting to build up that tone on the side of the Airstream as well as the door. And I say it all the time, but really focus on building tones as opposed to starting off really strong. I'd rather you take your time and start light and gradually become darker over time as opposed to going full force, 100% color and having to take some away because it's almost impossible to take color off the page once it dries. So keep that in mind. I really wanted to focus on that Airstream shadow and making sure that I was happy with it. So I kept coming back with, with greens and a little bit of gray and making sure that it looked like the sun was casting a shadow. And even with the picnic table and elements of the Airstream, like the little air vent on top, having that even cast a shadow. Little details like that can really sell your painting and they're just, no one else will really notice them, but it makes your, your photo feel complete. And when they're not there, it feels a little bit more empty. And so try not to go too overboard with them, but add in enough details that people can appreciate them, whether they know it or not. So as you focus on building out tones and building them up, I'm going to ask a little question and you can just answer in the comments. Would you prefer a, videos like this that are shorter around 10 minutes with me just voiceovering, or would you consider B, longer videos that are complete paintings around 30 to 40 minutes where I just talk as I paint in real time and then upload the video, which is more helpful? Or do you want a mix of these where I do some longer ones and some shorter ones? I really need to know. I've asked a few people and gotten a mixed answer, but let me know because that would really help me out and knowing what would help you guys best because maybe the shorter videos don't help you guys enough. Maybe the longer videos are too long and too boring. I really wanna know so I can help you guys understand watercolor more and get to a level where you're feeling comfortable where you can really take off with your work and have fun with it because I know that watercolor can be extremely, extremely frustrating in the beginning. So you can put this next phrase on my graystone because I've said it every video as well, but from here on out, you are building up tones. So I added in a little bit of blue into that window to make it look like there was a sky reflection. And now I'm coming back through with other colors and building up those tones and then blow drying it. And now for the last part, I'm gonna come back through and I always save this for last, but I come back through with my pen and add more line work. There goes the little cups I was telling you about adding more line work, building up shadows with my lines, adding in little cross hatch lines here and there. Um, just whatever I feel looks good. Trying to keep it in control though and not go too much. I'm a big advocate for less is more. So don't overdo it because you can't undo it. And that is gonna wrap it up for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, also answer that question I asked uh, earlier in the video about would longer or shorter videos help? That'll really help me know. Um, and I'll keep these tutorials coming as long as you guys keep watching. And 
I have a ton of fun helping you guys out. So ask me any questions. Feel free to tag me with your finished work on Instagram. I love seeing, I've already had one person do it. I wanna start doing an artist of the week. So tag me with your stuff on Instagram and we'll have a lot of fun. Thanks guys. <laughs>